Değerli katılımcılar, e, öncelikle e, bu programa katılımınız için e, teşekkür etmek isterim. E, yeni ve önemli bir konu e, tıbbın hemen bütün alanlarında, aslında bütün e, e, eğitim, teknoloji, bütün alanları kapsayan bir konu Artificial Intelligence, e, yapay zeka e, ve biz de e, Tıp fakülteleri, tıp camiası olarak bu programa yavaş yavaş ısınmaya, alışmaya çalışıyoruz. Benim bugün anlatacağım konu Artificial Intelligence in Stroke Prevention. Artificial Intelligence is an interesting subject as history, definition. I will mention about AI mechanism, AI history in medicine, AI in stroke prevention and AI in the future. Uh, you know, uh, our century is a brain century, uh, but uh, it will be more interesting with artificial intelligence. And uh, stroke burden is very important uh, for healthcare and, uh, you know, cardiovascular diseases is the leading cause of mortalities around the world, which has accounted for the global death of uh, approximately 17 million people. And we know that every second seconds, 40 seconds, someone in the United States has a stroke and someone dies one of Uh, one approximately every four minutes. This is really very, very serious situation. And uh, we have uh, important uh, burden. We need uh, uh, additional uh, health care services for uh, hemorrhagic stroke, ischemic stroke, and uh, other kind of cerebrovascular disorders. And prevention uh, is extremely important because Uh, after having a stroke, uh, treatment is really very difficult, very expensive and affect all individuals and population impact actually. Uh, we have important uh, risk factors. This is uh, data from uh, many countries and you can see easily that high systolic blood pressure, diet low in fluids, high body mass index, diet high in sodium and smoking. Uh, are the top uh, stroke risk factors and uh, we know that uh, many of these uh, risk factors can be uh, prevented. Uh, unfortunately, uh, all uh, stroke risk factors, high body mass index, insufficient physical activity and others are increasing continuously. So, Uh, this means that we will have more stroke patients in the future. So we uh, have to uh, increase uh, awareness uh, and we must uh, improve some new tools uh, to reach populations. Um, this is a good news, actually. Uh, we know that more than 90% of stroke burden is attributable to modifiable risk factors. That is, we can change this, so we can reduce stroke burden with prevention. And we have some important Europe, uh, European based uh, uh, targets uh, like to reduce the absolute number of stroke in Europe by 10%. This is important. And uh, so at this situation, uh, we can talk about artificial intelligence and stroke prevention. Is this a new op opportunity or what can we do? Uh, what must we do? So, what can AI uh, can do? Uh, actually, AI has the potential to accelerate the field of precision medicine by helping practitioners to calculate. It can help to calculate the risk, uh, to guide the treatment, to predict the outcome, and uh, to close the care gap, actually, uh, for different populations. Uh, as a summary, disease diagnosis and patient monitoring Uh, especially in high impact fields is uh, is uh, is a very uh, attractive uh, area for uh, artificial intelligence uh, another uh, field incidental findings for preventive uh, care by scanning through images and reports we can use all these images we can use our all data actually 
risk strat stratification for primary or secondary prevention is important and resource and workflow opt optimization by leveraging uh, administrative data is also very important. So AI can be specifically designed to improve clinical care and increase efficiency in drug discovery also because it takes uh, many, many years, more than 15 years sometimes, but you can simulate uh, with AI uh, drug uh, development procedures uh, in a shorter duration. So you can see in this table uh, the main areas, risk estimation, acute diagnosis, acute imaging, uh, tri uh, triaging, and uh, acute treatment. Personalized treatment is also another important uh, field. Uh, outcome prediction, again, uh, important for also rehabilitation. Risk estimation is uh, extremely important because prevention is the best and cheap method uh, to reduce uh, cerebrovascular uh, disease burden. And uh, if you can talk about the uh, story of artificial intelligence, I, I'm sure you, you know, you all know uh, this uh, information, but uh, just to remember, in the uh, 1950s, an American computer scientist, John McCarthy, first introduced the term and principles of artificial intelligence, uh, that uh, machines are uh, capable of demonstrating cognitive functions that humans associate with other human minds, such as learning and problem solving. This is important. We, we recognize that AI uh, learns from experience, so you can improve your algorithms, uh, you can uh, develop uh, applications uh, with uh, standard data, uh, again, uh, with help of AI. So during the last two decades, great progress with artificial intelligence have been invented. And uh, today we are using many applications, many guidelines, many, many devices uh, with uh, AI in stroke field. Healthcare and medicine stand to benefit immensely from deep learning, and, uh, the, and the, there is an increase in proliferation of medical devices and digital record systems. So how does artificial intelligence work? Again, uh, reminding, artificial Intelligence uh, algorithms capable of demonstrating cognitive functions associated with human mind, such as learning. We have learning uh, capacity, actually, uh, skills, problem solving, adaptation, logic, if then rules, and uh, or decision tree. And we have also machine machine learning, a form of intelligence based on compilation of complex algorithms and software that mimic the human mind to decipher critical problems. And moreover, deep learning, a class of artificial neural ne networks that learns in unsupervised manner. This is important. So uh, types of AI uh, are artificial general intelligence and artificial narrow intelligence. And we use uh, generally artificial narrow intelligence kind. And uh, if we can uh, look at for the mechanism. Deep learning is a form of representation learning in which a machine is fed with raw data and develop its own representation needed for pattern recognition. Uh, that is uh, composed of multiple layer of representation. We, if we have uh, standardized and uh, good data and uh, large data, actually big data, uh, the best, uh, we can uh, evaluate them with AI and uh, we can have some important outputs. These layers are typically arranged sequentially and composed of a large number of primitive and non linear operations. Deep neural networks seem to have many hidden layers between the input layers and output layers. Uh, so in this manner, highly complex functions can be learned. We can have uh, many, many uh, important uh, output data. So the main 
levels are receiving information as input data, data processing using a machine learning algorithm, and output information, which is uh, then used in decision tree and action. So you can see input data, many hidden layers, and then output. Uh, you can use um, every kind of data, actually, image inputs, uh, electrocardiogram, some health records, and even model, model inputs. Again, you will have uh, many uh, hidden layers and then uh, input in good quality. Uh, raw data are uh, first aggregated across institution in order to ensure that a generalizable system is, is built. This is this may be more important, uh, most important uh, level because if we have uh, good quality data, we can have uh, trustable and uh, important, uh, useful uh, outputs. So. Uh, in hospital or in centers, in our centers, we have unstructured uh, electronic health record. This, these are raw data. And we can uh, arrange these data uh, to use in uh, AI mechanism. And temporal sequencing is important. And uh, we can have some uh, response. So algorithms are ordinary regression, random forest, and deep CNN. We have some benefits uh, for using uh, AI, uh, increased practice efficiency, quick in making diagnosis without bias, help in prevention of undesirable events like stroke, help in risk stratification of recurrent attack. Recording can be checked again and again because we have as a standard data, other physician can use and confirm your data. So this uh, to reach the diagnosis. Uh, and uh, AI can alert uh, physicians to make a decision. And also we have some bar barriers. Uh, these are lack of data standards and open data re repositories in machine learning. Leaking open data storage and open program, disruption of traditional doctor patient relationship. This is extremely important for ethical uh, view, ethical approach. And concern for malpractice liability. And we have some solutions to overcome the, uh, these limitations by using uh, large data models uh, with massive infrastructure like medical data models portal and combining affordable devices. And all data for training and testing are expected to be uh, of high quality. This is important. And uh, so machine learning uh, may be able to bridge the gap uh, between uh, science and practice, actually. There are uh, many disorders in AI field. And you can see cardiovascular disorders in a third rank. And uh, dementia, epilepsy, neurocritical care, Parkinson's disease, and psychiatric disorders. And most importantly, uh, for today's subject, stroke is in the field of uh, artificial intelligence. So we can, we can use some uh, artificial uh, intelligence technology and applications. We have already uh, these uh, devices, smartwatches, smartphones, tablet-based devices, algorithm of self-organizing map, and neuroimaging uh, devices. And uh, for stroke prevention, we have uh, a very useful uh, application. Uh, again, uh, this is an AI application, stroke risk meter for prevention of stroke, but we have many other applications to prevent uh, neurological disorders and cardiovascular disorders. You can see uh, in the literature uh, these applications and AI devices. So stroke risk meter uh, to calculate uh, self risk, self stroke risk. Uh, this is really very uh, helpful device. 
And uh, as doctors, uh, physicians, uh, actually, we are using these uh, application to uh, pr to predict uh, stroke risk of our patients and uh, to inform uh, for the uh, modification of stroke risk again. And uh, risk-based approaches for the management of uh, cardiovascular diseases are uh, very important, as I said previously. Uh, and uh, at this moment, we have some questions for uh, artificial intelligence and uh, for stroke prevention. Uh, the first question is, is it possible to use artificial intelligence in stroke prevention? How artificial intelligence can be used to improve stroke prevention and in different populations? Is it possible to support enough data entry for AI? And is artificial intelligence superior to conventional risk uh, calculators for stroke pre prediction? And the last question, are there some ethical debates around the patient safety and privacy? You can see the increase in uh, usage of applications. There are many studies, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, stroke area. And uh, uh, I will mention shortly, uh, they are using um, uh, classic traditional uh, risk factor calculators and uh, AI uh, machine-based calculators. And after uh, making uh, evaluation, after evaluation of 14 uh, classical uh, stroke risk factor, uh, you can see that they found, actually they uh, investigated that uh, area under the curve was computed for all the 13 and type of uh, cardiovascular risk uh, calculator statistics. Well, this is traditional and the machine learning based system. And we, we are seeing that uh, performance uh, are uh, is increasing by uh, more than 40% actually with uh, machine learning based calculation. And you can see also again uh, rock curve mm. with the machine learning. If you can add uh, more um, uh, data, mm. more uh, risk factor, you can uh, have a more trustable. Uh, uh, results actually yeah the integrated risk factor have higher predictive ability not only in statistically derived risk calculator but also with the machine learning based calculator so using uh, many uh, data is important there are a lot of study on this another study to predict uh, risk factor models uh, you can, as I said previously, you can use all uh, data, stroke biomarkers, um, clinical uh, data, um, demographic data, uh, imaging data, and you can uh, calculate complications, uh, risk assessment, and you can uh, establish uh, risk prevention uh, strategies. The mechanism is same again that data entry and hidden layers and then outputs you can use more than one ethnicity population yes and you can have integrated predictive cardiovascular disease risk model for you can use also for uh, prediction of uh, atrial fibrillation and for the diagnosis of atrial fibrillation and uh, you can use also uh, artificial intelligence uh, to retest of uh, previous uh, cohort studies and you can get uh, completely different uh, results. This is uh, one of sample for that. And um, after retesting, uh, you can see that nonlinear machine learning methods demonstrate superior predictive power for stroke even in 
uh, from Ingram study, uh, you know, the most famous uh, cohort uh, for stroke uh, area. And uh, you can use early identification of a high risk TIA or minor stroke with another area, and the mechanism is the same. And after data collection, you can predict risk of uh, TIA. Uh, and you can use this method for multi-ethnic uh, uh, studies. You can uh, calculate every uh, ethnic population uh, by uh, their cell. Uh, this was uh, a study from our center to calculate risk um, mortality risk uh, with machine learning. You can see the red one. And if we go to our questions again, is it possible to use artificial intelligence in stroke prevention? Yes, uh, there are many studies to prove this. And how artificial intelligence can be used to improve stroke prevention in different populations? Uh, this is depends on uh, data quality and large data. Is it possible to support enough data entry? Uh, yes, uh, we have already many data in as uh, electronic health records, so we can uh, use this in a stan standardized uh, way, or we can uh, regulate uh, these data again as. Um, and new uh, managed uh, data. Uh, is artificial intelligence superior to conventional risk calculator for stroke prediction? Yes, there are again many studies for this. And are there some ethical debates around patient safety and privacy? Again, uh, yes, we need to uh, uh, prepare a new criteria and ethical um, rules uh, for this uh, area, actually. Yes, and for the future, uh, artificial intelligence has gained a lot of attention in the realms of detecting, diagnosing, and even preventing irreversible outcome due to neurological disorders. And a new horizon is emerging in neurology in the form of artificial intelligence, actually, to help patients to improve their uh, prognosis and future work will like to focus on developing algorithms to improve unstructured uh, data uh, in electrical uh, electronic health record. Uh, thank you very much.